Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with MachineSkills.com and today I'm going to do a quick tutorial on playing chords in Machine so that you can press a single note on your machine pads and have a whole chord playback inside the software. I'm going to be showing two different methods. Uh, they both have some upsides and some downsides. I haven't found a great way to do this yet but these both work pretty well. If you like this tutorial, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're coming out with several different machine videos a week right now. Okay, so let's get started. So both of the methods that we're gonna use are gonna require us to have a template loaded into our machine, and it's not gonna have to be anything fancy. Um, so you can just create a new template and use that for starters. And you'll notice that the default note range of the first page in the uh, new template is pretty low. I mean, you start playing at MIDI note C negative 1, which is almost as low as MIDI can go. So I'm just going to use page E, which starts at uh, middle C, C3. It's just a much more usable range, musically speaking. Okay, so if we double click on one of these buttons, we're going to open up the assign page here and in the hit tab, it's going to define which note gets played um, or which action happens when this MIDI pad gets pressed. And by default, they're all going to play notes and they're um, programmed in chromatically so that we have access to all the notes here from C3 to D sharp 4. We also have access to this second tab here in the assign page called press and that's going to define the action that is triggered by the aftertouch or the um, continuous pressure on the MIDI pad. And we can actually use that to trigger notes. So for example if we have the C3 note here trigger uh, G3 will get a very very basic C chord and um, we can set the value is going to be the velocity that that note plays at and the threshold is going to be the pressure at which the note turns off which I'm going to set to zero and below that we have the threshold which turns the note on which I'm going to set to you know, around 30 or so, so it'll only play if you press the note uh, hard enough. So using this method, we can have one note trigger another note or another action pretty easily, which is kind of simple and fun for creating very basic chords, but it's not going to get us too far because uh, we can only play two notes at a time, which is pretty limiting. And um, having to program in each note individually is kind of a bit much as well. And the big upside of this method is it's really easy to keep yourself in a certain key with this method, which is pretty awesome. Um, but it's just really tedious to program. So for the next method, I'm just going to delete the template we've been working on and create another one. And once again, I'm going to go to page E. And that's all we need to do for this template. I'm just going to use the default on page E. And to use this next method, you're going to want to keep your machine in MIDI mode. So when I close Controller Editor, it stays that way. And if yours doesn't, then you just want to get it back there by pressing Shift F1. So by default, this template is going to send its MIDI notes to the currently selected instrument. But what we're going to do instead is use another slot as a dummy MIDI track. 
So we'll go to the inputs and outputs up here and select as our input the machine micro and you can keep it on all channels and for the destination we're gonna set sound one and make sure you set the channel to one and the next thing we can do is just copy this process on the sound three so again we'll set the input to the machine and we'll set the MIDI to go to sound one on channel one and this time we're gonna transpose the MIDI note up by four semitones you can hear this. And to get a full major scale, we just want to create a third dummy MIDI track. And this one's going to be transposed up by seven semitones. And you can hear this. All right, so by solving one problem, which is that we wanted to have several MIDI inputs to our single instrument, we've kind of created another, which is that this instrument is always going to play now, regardless of what instrument is selected on the machine software. So you can turn off these dummy MIDI tracks simply by clicking on the number on the left hand side here. All right, so the one downside that we have with this method is that it's not really possible to keep things in a specific key and scale. Um, so for example, the seventh semi semitone shifted up from a B note is an F sharp. And um, if we're playing in the key of C major, there is no F sharp note. Um, and there's no way to kind of filter out those notes that we don't want. And so how closely you really want to adhere to music theory is really up to you. I mean, rock music ignores it pretty much entirely. And you're just kind of transposing major scales up and down the fretboard. So it's kind of up to you and what you're trying to accomplish. But I just thought I'd mention that. All right, I hope you guys found this tutorial to be useful. Uh, this is Salamander Anagram for MachineSkills.com. Uh, please check out our website. Uh, we come out with a bunch of tutorials every week. All right, thanks for watching.